Hi everyone and welcome to the video presentation for module 17. Last time we talked about diatonic triads, now we're going to talk about diatonic seventh chords. So after watching this we'll be able to identify diatonic seventh chords with different Roman numerals. We'll be able to recognize the pattern of seventh chord types in all major scales and recognize the pattern of the most common seventh chord types in all the minor scales. So let's talk a little bit about the Roman numerals for seventh chords. So if you remember when we talked about Roman numerals for triads, we use things like a capital Roman numeral to stand for a major triad, a lowercase Roman numeral to stand for a minor triad, and then we had symbols we could use like the circle or the plus to indicate that we were talking about a diminished or an augmented triad. For seventh chords, it's the same thing. We use either capital or a symbol or lowercase in a symbol or capital by itself and the number seven to indicate different types of seventh chords. Okay, And so uppercase numerals with an M and a seven indicate a major seventh chord. Okay, So for example a capital I with an M and a seven means it's a major seventh chord. Uppercase numerals with just the seven so without the M next to it indicate a dominant seventh chord. So this capital V with a 7 means it's a dominant 7th chord, also known as a major minor 7th chord. And uh, lowercase numerals with a 7 indicate a minor 7th chord. So this is a 2, 7, lowercase 2, 7 means it's a minor 7th chord. Lowercase numerals with a little half circle, well I guess it's a circle with a half slash through it, and a 7 indicate a half diminished 7th chord just like the chord symbols we've talked about before. And then finally, lowercase numerals with a full circle, so without the slash, and a seven indicate a fully diminished seventh chord. So these are the symbols we're gonna be using to identify different seventh chords. Notice that they all have the number seven next to them. So with the triads, um, we didn't have to write a number above them. Now you could have added, you could, you might have to add a number if they're inverted, right? That was the base position symbol stuff we talked about. Um, with seventh chords, they'll always have some kind of number. If they're root position, they'll have a seven. If they're first inversion, they'll have a six five. If they're third inversion, they'll have four three. If they're fourth or third inversion, they'll have four two. So seventh chords will always have some kind of number next to them that indicates that they are seventh chords. So the seventh chords in major keys, just like triads, a seventh chord can be built on every note of a scale. And these chords are all going to be diatonic because only the notes that belong in the key are used to make these chords. So here are all the triads in D major. Um, and so I'm not going to, you know, go through all the triads again because, as you know, you create seventh chords just by adding an extra note above the fifth of a triad. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'll add all the Roman numerals that belong for each of these triads. Notice I'm just adding the ones for, you know, either uppercase or lowercase according to the kind of triad, except for the last one, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so let's see what kind of seventh chords we get when we add sevenths to these triads. So I just added a C sharp above that D major triad, which is the one chord. So I had a D major triad, and I added a C sharp to be the seventh. And you can hear that that is a major seventh chord. So we have a major triad and then a major seventh between the root and the seventh. So that's a major seventh. So the Roman numeral we'll use for this is the M7. So this is a one major seventh chord. Let's look at the two, which had an E minor triad. And we're gonna add a D to make it a seventh chord. And the distance between that E and that D is a minor seventh. So this is a minor seventh chord. So we can just write the number seven next to that lowercase two to indicate that this is a minor seventh chord. All right, let's look at this next one, the three. And to make this a seventh chord, we'll add the E above the C sharp. And now again, we have a minor seventh between F sharp and E. So we have minor triad, minor seventh, which is another minor seventh chord. So we'll just write the number seven next to that lowercase three. All right. Now the four was a G major triad, and we're gonna add a seventh, and it'll be F sharp, because that F sharp belongs in the key of D major. And we'll end up with a major seventh between the G and the F sharp. So we'll end up with a major 
seventh chord. So we'll write M7 next to that. And this next one is special because it's the only dominant seventh chord we have in this key. And so let's talk about the structure real quick. From A, C sharp, E, that's a major triad. And then we'll add the note that's a seventh above the A, which is a minor seventh. So we have a major triad, minor seventh, makes it a dominant seventh chord, also known as a major minor seventh chord. Okay. And if you remember your scale degree names, which you might from, I think you talked about it in ear training, but you also talk about, we also talked about it a few chapters ago, but the fifth note of the scale is also called the dominant note of the scale. So one of the reasons that we, well, the reason we call this a dominant seventh chord is because it's built on the dominant note of the scale. Okay, so it's a really special chord that we're going to be talking about a lot um, in upcoming uh, modules. So for now, it's enough to know that five is always going to be a, or sorry, a seventh chord built on five is always going to be a dominant seventh chord. Okay, and let's look at this next one. We had a B minor triad on the bottom, and we're going to make this a seventh chord by adding that A which is a minor seventh between the root and the seventh. So again, we have a minor seventh chord. So we'll just add a seven next to that lowercase uh, Roman numeral. And here we have a diminished triad built on C sharp. And we're gonna add a seven to this chord by adding a B. And the distance between C sharp and B is a minor seventh. So this chord has a diminished triad and a minor seventh so this is a half diminished seventh. So we'll use our little half circle with a seven. Okay. So this is the pattern of all the seventh chord types in every single major key. So C major has this same pattern, right? Um, a major, all the major keys, every single major key has this pattern of chords. So the one chord in major will always be a major seven. The five chord in major will always be a dominant five, right? The seven chord in major will always be a half diminished seven and so on. Okay, diatonic chords in minor keys. So as you remember, the variability of scale degrees six and seven is a thing we have to deal with in minor. So there are a lot more possible seventh chords than we're going to talk about. There are so many, in fact, that most theory books don't even cover them. I think, you know, you saw with the triads where this book tried to show you every single type of triad that's kind of overwhelming. So we're going to limit our discussion to just the seven most common types of seventh chords found in a minor key. And again, we'll, we'll base most of this on the harmonic minor scale. So see that every triad here that we're going to start with is built on a note of the D, D harmonic minor scale, right? So this first chord is a minor triad, right? And we'll go ahead and put all the Roman numerals in here. That first chord has a lowercase one because it's a minor triad. If we add a C to it, it becomes a seventh chord. And the distance between the root and the seventh is a minor seventh. So this is a, a minor seventh chord. So we use the symbol lowercase one, seven to indicate it. This next one, if we add a D to it, it becomes a seventh chord. So now we have a diminished triad between E, G, and B flat. And we have a minor seventh between the root and the seventh. So this is a half diminished seventh chord, All right? For the three, we add an E to make it a seventh chord. And now we have a chord that has a major triad on the bottom and a major seventh between the root and the seventh, which makes it a major seventh chord. So we'll add M7 to indicate that. Our next chord, the four chord, um, has a minor triad on the bottom. We'll add an F to make it a seventh chord. The distance between G and F is a minor seventh. So that makes this a minor seventh chord again. Now this next one, the five, right, includes the C sharp that should exist in harmonic minor. And so when we add that G again, it's the same chord we had in major. And this is part of the reason that we changed that C to a C sharp. So this five chord can be major and the five seven chord can be dominant. Okay, and we'll talk way more about that later. Um, but for now, just remember that that dominant seventh chord, that major minor seventh, 
um, is exists on the five on the fifth note of the scale. Okay, and we use the number seven without an M in front of it, with that capital five to indicate that it is a dominant seventh chord. Okay, then we have a six, and we add an A to make it a seventh, and between that. B flat on A is a major seventh, and B flat D F was a major triad, so this ends up being a major seventh chord again. And then at the end of this scale, built on C sharp, we have a really special chord, right? So we have a C sharp E G, which is a diminished triad, and if we add a B flat, we end up with a diminished seventh. So that makes this the only uh, fully diminished seventh chord that we've seen so far. Okay, and just like major, since these chords are all diatonic, right, they all use the notes that belong in D minor, every minor key has the same pattern of seventh chord types, so it's worth memorizing this too. Okay, so those are the diatonic seventh chords and major and minor keys. Any questions you have about this, we can go over it in the Zoom session. We'll also be going over the assignments that we've been doing. Um, yeah, other than that, thanks for watching, and have a great day.